Hello, this is Mr. Doral. Today we're going to be going through stoichiometry using a BCA table. This is going to be a quick lesson on this and just so you can get familiar with how the table works. So hold on. One of the first things we need to know is how a balanced chemical equation works and what does it tell you. And so when we look at this equation of hydrogen and oxygen reacting together to make water, we can see the coefficients in the front right here. We have two hydrogens and we could call that two molecules of hydrogen react with there's nothing here so it's an understood one one molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water but we could also think of it in terms that we could use back in the lab because we really can't measure molecules so we're gonna think of this as two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of water now it's really important that we get that mole ratio and that ratio is going to stay the same every time this reaction happens. This is like a recipe saying that we always need two of these for every one of these to make two of these every time. Those ratios are very important to us in stoichiometry. This is what our BCA table is going to look like. We're going to always start out with a balanced chemical equation and we have the equation written right up above. Underneath we have B which stands for before, C which is change, and A which is after. So again we have the before, that's before the reaction takes place. So an easy thing to fill in on the before is the products are always going to be zero moles and we only put moles in a BCA table. The change is going to be how much, how many moles they changed by as the reaction went, took place and so again this is change. And once we find out how one of these changes, then we can figure out how each other one changes based on the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And then the after is what we end up with when we're all done. After the reaction stops, we should have some product. We're probably going to have one of the reactants that ran out, and the other one may have run out, but it may be an excess reactant also. So let's jump right into a BCA table right now. And so when we do this, we see how many moles of oxygen gas are needed to react with hydrogen to produce 13.6 moles of water in a synthesis reaction. First thing we need is a balanced chemical equation. If you don't know how to write a balanced chemical equation for this, then maybe you need to go back and look at writing chemical equations, the video on that. And so when we do this, we need two of these and two of these. Then once we have our balanced chemical equation, then we are going to do our B, C, a before change and after and so before it doesn't say how much hydrogen we had so if it doesn't say we're gonna assume that it is an excess which means that we have plenty of it and we don't have to worry about how much we started with we just know we have plenty enough to react and then it doesn't either say how much um, oxygen gas we have so I'm gonna put a little question mark right there but it does say we need to produce 13.6 moles of water now before the reaction started we had zero moles Nothing happened before, we had no water produced before the reaction started from this reaction, but we do know that we gained 13.6 moles of water. And so that's why I'm going to put that in our change. And we also can figure out then at the end, we're going to have 13.6 moles of water. So from this change that we have on this uh, water, we can use the coefficients up here to figure out how each of the other ones changed. And so once you find out how one changes, then use the balanced equation to figure out how all the other ones did. So I'm going to do a little factor label right here. And so what I'm going to do is, and I know some of you can do this in your head, you're really smart, but watch me anyways and, and do this anyways. I'm going to start with 13.6 moles right here. And then I'm going to multiply that by the factor that comes from these how they're related the the coefficients and so I always want to put the one on top of what I'm going to I want to find out what uh, hydrogen in this case and I'm coming from water and that goes on the bottom so I'm gonna put 2 over 2 now when I do that I can see that they're an even ratio they're equal to each other 2 to 2 is the same as 1 to 1 so I know I'm gonna use 13.6 moles right here now I'm gonna put a minus there because this is a reactant and reactants get used up so I'm using up 13.60 moles and then so for the oxygen then I could really use either one of those two that I want I'm gonna start they're both 13.6 so 13.6 times now my factor in this case is I have uh, understood one in front of this one and that's the one I'm going to so I'm gonna put one over and I, I put what I'm coming from and I'm coming from this water right here 1 over 2. And so when I do that, I get 6.8 
moles is my answer on there. And then sig figs, it would be 6.80 moles. And then I'm actually using that much up. So when it wants to know the change, I, or my after, I don't know how much I started with. And so I'm not really going to put anything in here. I'm just going to keep this as excess. Um, I'm going to assume that I started with that exact amount of, of oxygen. So I'm going to put zero moles right in here. Now, the, going back to the question, we filled out our BCA table, but the question said, how many moles of oxygen gas are needed to react? Well, then I got to go back in the table, and I see that my change in oxygen gas was 6.80 moles. So my answer on this for this problem is 6.80 moles of O2 needed. And that's how I figure out that answer. Okay, so here's a little more detailed problem. You have to predict the products on this one. You're starting with 6.35 moles of calcium chloride reacting with silver nitrate in a double replacement reaction. And so you need to write a balanced chemical equation on this and then figure out, using a BCA table, how many moles of each product will be formed. So if you want to really help yourself out, then you should pause this right now and try it on your own because I'm going to pause it and start writing and all of a sudden everything's going to show up there. So if you want to wait, if you want to work on your own, then pause it right now. Okay, so here is the balanced chemical equation, and I've started my BCA table. We need to add into this BCA table the before. It says we started with 6.35 moles of calcium chloride. So right here, I'm going to put my 6.35 moles. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the silver nitrate, so I'm going to put excess. Zero and zero moles on each one of those. Normally, I'd put moles, but i got to keep moving here. I'm going to react that completely, so I'm going to lose this 6.35 moles, and then I can figure out how this changes on each one of these. So I'm going to say I know that 6.35 times, and then I'm going to use my factor based on my coefficients right here. I'm going to silver nitrate. I came from over here, so 2 over 1. So I'm going to put times 2 over 1. And then when I do that math, I find out that this was uh, 12.7. That's in the correct number of sig figs, moles. And I use that much. So then when I go over here on the other side, then I, it doesn't matter that I'm going on each side of the arrow. These are still ratios of how they're related to each other. And so I'm going to use the 6.35 on this one. 6.35 times and then I'm going to the calcium nitrate which has a 1 and coming from calcium chloride which is this is going to be plus 6.35 moles and I just want to show you that we can go either way right here so on this one I'm going to use the 12.7 12.7 and then I'm going to times and I'm going to silver chloride and that has a 2 I'm coming from silver nitrate this time 2 over 2. It doesn't matter which one I use as long as I use the correct ratio. So this is going to be a plus 12.7 moles. And so when I do that, I can find out my change. My change here, this is, I'm going to end up, or my after, I'm sorry, is going to be 0 moles right here. My change, I don't know how much I started with, so I'm just going to say I still have excess. And then this is going to be 6.35 moles. And this is going to be 12.7 moles. So when it wants to know how many moles of each product are going to be formed, this is where I get my answer from right here. And so my answer to this question would be 6.35 moles of CaNO32 and 12.7 moles of AgCl. Now I could ask all kinds of other questions from this and you have to know what they are. And so I may ask you how much silver nitrate would be used. And so with the silver nitrate that was used was this part right here, how it, what it changed by, 12.7 moles. That's the kind of things you're going to need to know. These are the basics of the BCA table, and so things that you just need to make sure that you're picking up on and practicing with. Have a great day.